G'day and welcome back to the 40 channel. Today we're going to have a look at rebuilding the heater blower motor. So we're going to go from this to this. And at the end of this, there's going to be a small little giveaway. So stay tuned and check it out. I've got a bit to learn about this 40. So as you can see, our resistor is pretty much destroyed. So we're going to make up a new bracket to mount the new resistor. Unfortunately, this bracket's just not big enough to use to mount our new resistor as it's a little bit wider. So we'll just take a bit of old rusty steel. It doesn't matter if it's clean or rusty. You can clean all that rust off later. This is just what I had laying around. We're going to mark out our new bracket, cut it out, clean it up, paint it, and we'll mount a new resistor to that. Let's get into it. Just quickly deburr the holes. I use a countersink drill and I just quickly give it a bit of a run around each hole. That way it's all nice and smooth, there's no burrs, no sharp edges and the bolts will slide straight through them without getting caught on them. Right, so this one's pretty cactus. You can see here, it's got a massive hole all the way right through to the guts of it. All these little wires are just destroyed. It's just totally perished. If you want to test your resistor, we need to get our multimeter. We put it on ohms. The first thing we want to do, we want to measure the ohms that your multimeter is reading. So I'm reading 0 0.5, 0 0.4. It's jumping between 0 0.5, 0 0.4. The reason that's important is because when we go to measure our resistance on our resistor, we're going to put that across the tube. All right, so I've got nothing. So it's it's totally dead. It's, it's cactus. There's nothing in it. But we're going to take this one and we're going to measure between here and here. Now this already says 1 ohms, which is pretty much where we want to be, uh, between 1 and 1 1.3 ohms. So, if we measure between this, right, so we've got 1.4 ohms across the resistor. We take that 0.4 away because that's what we had when we measured it at the beginning, and that gives us 1 ohm, which is exactly what this resistor is. This one came up with absolutely nothing, so that one's cactus. This will be our new replacement, and that'll do the job. Right, I just got some little M3 bolts here. They're a bit too long, so we're just going to cut them short. Right, eh? So there we have it. Bit of wiring to be done. Right, eh? Now I'm actually going to use the existing wiring harness. Cut it off so we've got all the right colours and all the right gauge wire. I'll, I'll just test the wires to make sure they're okay, but they, they should be fine because it's all sealed. We'll cut this plug off. We'll put a brand new plug on, brand new terminals. And we'll solder it onto the end of the new one. So we'll cut that off. Cut off as close as we can to the end here, so it gives me more room to work with. And I've actually got a pretty much a brand new piece of uh, blue wire here with the black stripe, so that'll be the same as what we've got here. And clean these wires up and we'll just test. Strip the end of the wires that we're using. Now I was able to save some of the wiring from that redundant wiring that we stripped out of the, uh, the cruiser there earlier in one of the earlier episodes. And the beauty of being able to save some of that is that I have blue with black stripe, blue with black stripe. Now I know this is getting a little bit pedantic, but what it means is that all the wiring will stay the same colours. So if you get a wiring diagram out later, you'll be able to follow it all and it'll all be correct. Now you don't have to go to that length, but that's just me. Right, I get a nice big piece of shrink wrap. Doesn't matter if it's too big. 
because it doesn't matter it's a little bit sloppy around it later slide that over well what we're going to do just to make sure that uh, our fan works is we're going to give it a quick test run we've already cut all the wiring off to replace the resistor um, but we're going to test this fan and make sure it works we don't want to go to all this trouble and then find out it's no good so all I'm going to do is I've got a quick small got a small 12 volt battery you can use a jump pack anything like that your white with the black is your negative and your blue with the black is positive. So just hook them up. Look at that. No dramas there. Is we're going to strip down the whole blower box. So all there is is a should I've just thrown one extra bolt in there because if you test it and it spins, it will could spin around and break your fan. We don't want to damage anything at this stage. We'll take the last bolt out. Clean all this old foam seal off all around the two faces here we've got uh, a few bolts and screws here separate the whole lot we'll give it a really good clean a really good wash and then we'll give it a paint up and it should look brand new let's clean it up pull everything out put it all aside there's our fan We're going to top our divider piece and our bottom and our fan. So you can see that in here, pull that out too, in our gate, you can see there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of dirt in here from over the years. And it's just going to be so much easier to be able to clean this all up now. Squeeze in on those two little sides, either side, and pops out. Well, we save that. For our little leaf guard, I'm just using a very fine brass brush. Just giving a really good clean over. It gets right in all those little gaps and we'll be able to give that a paint as well. Okay, 8mm. Let's just get our little socket on there. Just carefully see if we can pry that off. There we go. So we can give that a wash now. we've washed we've scrubbed we've wax and degreased moved everything it's ready for the paint bay so I've got it sitting over in the paint bay I'm going to use this um, squirts paint and prime and it does wood plastic metal the whole lot so I figured an all-in-one paint we should be able to paint the whole lot and hopefully it'll come up all right let's check it out see what happens into the paint bay all right here's the official paint bay we'll start hitting it with some paint Couple bits of heat shrink. Just gonna thread that through like that. Bend that over. And then we're gonna solder. All right, so we get our two wires them together. Give it a bit of a twist. Let's 
Put some heat shrink over the both of them. That hole's a bit too small to thread this through, so I'm actually going to drill this hole out <coughs> so we can thread that through. Alright. Try and bend that around. See if we can get this heat shrink over it. Right, now, let's replace the plug. Now you can do this in any order you like. You can do the plug first before you do all the rest of the stuff. I've just left it to last just because. No reason. Any order you like. Cut the wires as close as I possibly can to the back of the plug. That way, gives me wire to work with. We'll get our flat splayed. We just sit, just so these back ones are just over the insulation on the wire. We get our non-insulated clamp and we just sit it over the top. It's pretty hard to film actually. Righto. So that's all you gotta do. You can see it's got a nice clamp in the back there. It's clamped on tight. We'll do the other two and then we'll put them on the plug. It's pretty simple really. Now they're all clamped on. So need to push them into, into our fitting so it's all in the correct position. You can get the old plug and you can use that as a guide if you forget. Okay, these have this little tab at the top here. So that needs to face upwards so it locks into place. So what we'll do is we'll put all of them in it. We'll push them all in at once so we're not trying to bend and twist wires around. Okay, so white and black at the top, blue and black on the left hand side, and blue and white on the right hand side. This is the juggle that I'm talking about, so it's better to try to get them all in at once like that. Double check you've got them in the right spots before you push them in, because once they're in, they're very difficult to get out. And then, just push them in. Just get a little screwdriver at the back. You'll hear a little tiny click. You can actually see the little tiny tabs are in place and now we're complete. Right, eh? we've completed our resistor replacement. Now I made up a new bracket. You're probably asking why didn't I just get the old bracket and mount the new resistor? Well the reason is the resistor is too big. It won't fit onto the old bracket. It would have been lovely if we could have just cut that off, put it straight onto the old bracket, made things easier, but we couldn't. So we made up a new bracket, new resistor, we've wired it all into place and we'll put a new plug on the end. So I've come down this morning to put the heater together, uh, the blower for the heater anyway. And the temperature here has dropped pretty quickly. Normally we would be out camping at this time of Easter, sitting around a campfire with my mates um, and really enjoying it. Unfortunately, we can't go camping and so I'm here in the shed doing stuff that's great. But the next best thing to a campfire is this. Check this out. So look at that. There we go, we've got our fire going in the, uh, in the shed. That's about as close as I'm gonna get to a campfire this Easter anyway. Alright, so I've cut my two pieces of foam out. I've cut the little hole out so that uh, we can attach our, our wire latch to that later. We'll use some uh, quick grip, we'll glue it down. And the beauty of it uh, is it's, it'll work and it's hidden away so no one will ever see it. Except for everyone that's watched this YouTube video. Anyway, alright let's glue it down and see how it holds. So we're going to leave it for about 5-10 minutes, 
let that glue just go a bit tacky and then we can apply it and then it'll uh, never come off, hopefully. All right, so as we're letting that glue tack off, we can put uh, the fan back together. Now we've got uh, two flat spots. We just need to line them up, slide it straight over. Put our washer on, a nut. Eight mil. It's still, it's just starting to tack off. Let's put it together and see what happens. Just want to make sure we press all that around the edges there. Make sure it all clears up. All right, we're just going to put something heavy down on that to hold that in place. We'll leave that, we'll let that uh, set. Right, well, we've glued up the other two. While we're waiting, we'll put this together. soldering it all together and while we're waiting for the glue to tack off we're just going to test to make sure that everything works correct what we've done we've just got uh, some quick quick connections on this little battery just so we can test it to make sure that all this works correctly make sure we haven't got anything wired up wrong make sure the resistor works properly and make sure that we get high and low speed on this fan our negative connected to here yes I know it's a red wire but our negative is connected to here then we can just tap it onto one side and then swap it over on the other side. High speed. Low speed. Perfect. You little ripper. We've got a winner there. So that's fantastic. Now we know that works. We'll solder it all up. Make it all look nice and neat and tidy. And then we can uh, continue to assemble the, uh, the blower box. It's coming along very nicely. Got a little bit of uh, thermal protection here, so we'll slide that on. This is a brand new piece. Put our heat shrink on first. Push it all the way out of the way. What are you two doing? Really happy how my bug cleaning sponge came up. Worked out really, really well. So I was able to cut the sponge, put it on both sides, just like it would have come from the old Toyota factory in Japan. All we need to do to reassemble, we've got a little slot there. I've reinstalled the little top clip as well. That little top clip just goes over the top of that gate. Sits on like that. Alright, so now our gate works perfectly. I'm really happy with the way the uh, end results come up. Let's put the rest of it together and we'll uh, finish it off. Take our top, sit it straight on. Just like that. Alright, we've got our little uh, plastic folding tab. If we turn it around, it goes just to the back here. Alright, now we can put the rest of the screws in. 10mm bolt and the rest are all screws. We're all done up. We've got to put our new seal on around here and around here. And we've got to install, I suppose I'm going to call it a leaf guard. 
I've got this foam tape that's left over from uh, when I built my caravan. This is a special weather seal tape that actually goes around all the windows of the caravan. Um, Caravans Plus online, that's where I bought this stuff from. So, since I've got a bit left over, this will work absolutely perfectly. We can mould it right around the edge here. It's got a double sided tape on the back. Sticks like, you know what, to a blanket. It's uh, fantastic. So we'll put that on. Just get right in there, push it in. install our leaf guard yeah look if you're at home doing this put the leaf guard in first learn from my mistakes success all right to really finish this off to give it that original look I pulled all this tape off when I uh, actually removed the top here check the brushes check the comb check the motor I pulled it apart the springs flew out the brushes came out it was a real pain, had to find them all, put it all back together and put it all back in. And I thought oh, I'll refilm it to show you guys, but I just didn't want to go through that pain again. So if you do go to pull this off for any reason, just be very aware when you pull it off, pull it off very slowly. The springs behind the brushes will want to fly out and go missing on you. So just maybe pull it apart, try to cup it in your hands and catch those springs because it'll be a real bugger if you lose them. Right, to finish this look off, we're going to use our cloth tape to give that more of an original look. We might even paint the top here and give it a silver paint on the top. So this has taken two days to do this, and overall it's come up sensational. I'm really, really happy with the end result. The resistor, you actually notice I've done two. This is a really common problem with the blower modes. The resistors burn out, They, uh, the ceramics just break up and crumble. I mean, 40 years, 50 years, you've got to expect something. So anyway, these are the new ones. Now, people are selling these on eBay um, and making them up, but I've shown you how to make your own. On top of that, I've done a spare one, as you can see. The reason I did two was because I know how these are prone to fail, and a lot of people are chasing up new ones for their 40 series. If yours is damaged, blown out, destroyed and you need a new one, I'm going to give you the chance to have this one. So all you need to do is jump on my YouTube page, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed, and leave a comment with, I need the resistor because. If you don't need the resistor, hey, that's fantastic. I still encourage you guys to leave a comment down below, hit the thumbs up, hit the bell, but make sure you subscribe. Really appreciate you guys supporting me on my channel. That's fantastic. I have a bit of fun doing this stuff. And I'm glad that it's helping some of you guys out there too.